years. Now, if you want to really drive him crazy, you say 12 more years. Because we caught them doing some really bad things in 2016. Let's see what happens. We caught them doing some really bad things. We have to be very careful because they're trying it again with this whole 80 million mail-in ballots that they're working on, uh, sending them out to people that didn't ask for them. They didn't ask. They just get them. And it's not fair, and it's not right, and it's not going to be possible to tabulate, in my opinion. It's just my opinion. We have to be very, very careful. And you have to watch. Every one of you, you have to watch. Because bad things happened last time with the spying on our campaign, and that goes to Biden, and that goes to Obama. And we have to be very, very careful. We have to be very, very careful. And this time, they're trying to do it with the whole post office scam. They'll blame it on the post office. You could see them setting it up. Be very careful and watch it very carefully because we have to win. This is the most important election in the history of our country. This is the most. You know, for, for a long period of time, I would say, well, 2016, how special was that evening? Was that one of the great? That was one of the great evenings. But we have to be very, very careful, and we have to win. Our country is counting on it. This is the biggest. This is it. Our country can go in a horrible, horrible direction or in an even greater direction. And before the plague came in from China, that's where we were going. We were going in a direction like we had never seen. The most successful economy in the history of our country, the best unemployment numbers in history for African American, Asian American, Hispanic American, women, college students, bad students, good students, everybody. <laughs> if you had a diploma, if you didn't have a diploma, it didn't matter, you were doing well. Everybody was doing well. And we were actually coming together. You know, success brings people together, maybe better than anything else. Success brings people. So many times they say, we're divided. Well, we were very divided under President Obama, very divided. People have no idea how divided. They didn't talk about it as much. They didn't say it as much. But we were really coming together. And I was speaking with Democrats all of a sudden because the success, the markets were at an all-time high. And by the way, take a look at what's happening with the markets. Take a look at your 401ks, which you probably do every hour. <laughs> take a look at your stocks. We're very close to breaking the record. And NASDAQ has already done it. You know, NASDAQ has broken the record, I think, 16 times already during a pandemic. Hopefully, we'll call it the final phase of a pandemic. You know, Biden the other day said, no, he'd shut it down. He'd listen to some guy say, and he'd shut it down. Uh, we just broke a record on jobs, an all-time record. There's never been three months where we've put more people to work, over 9 million people. And again, we're just about ready to break the all-time stock market re record. I mean, you look at it. We're just about ready to do it again. And what that means is everything else is going to follow. Very smart on Wall Street. Everything else is going to be there. The economy is coming up very rapidly. Our farmers are doing well. Our farmers are doing well because I got China to give them $28 billion because they were targeted by China. I got the farmers $28 billion, 16 and 12. That's why, so in spite of the pandemic, and our farmers did a great job in supplying food and all of the difficulties during this period of time. But uh, we're getting ready to do things like nobody's ever seen before. But the best way to bring unity is success. Success brings unity. And we were there. And then we got hit with the plague. But we won't forget that. I just want to thank the people of North Carolina because, to be honest with you, I felt an obligation to be here. Uh, you have a, a governor who's in a total shutdown mood. I guarantee on November 4th, it'll all open up. It'll be fine, like most other states.
On November 4th, you know, these Democrat governors, they love shutdown until after the election's over because they want to make our numbers look as bad as possible for the economy. But our numbers are looking so good. And frankly, I used to say a V, and people would say, well, maybe not. I don't think so. Some would say, no way. We have a super V. You're right. It's now looking like it's a super V. Uh, our automobile numbers are incredible. Both used cars and brand new cars. Our manufacturing numbers incredible. We're putting a lot of manufacturing jobs to work that the previous administration said you'd need a magic wand. You'd need a magic wand for manufacturing jobs. I don't think so. I guess we had the magic wand, that's all. But we're putting them again. We're putting them back. We're bringing them back. But think of your life just prior to the plague coming in. It was the best it's ever been. Your state had the best numbers they've ever had, ever had by far. And we had the best employment numbers also. We were up to 160 million jobs. We were never anywhere near that. And then we had to shut it down. We saved millions and millions of lives. We learned the enemy. We learned all about the invisible enemy, how it affects really people that are older, especially older people, the elderly, but older people with uh, problems with heart, with diabetes, with other problems. And we learned, and most of the country is right now doing very, very well. They've done an incredible job. And to have a man sitting on television the other day say, oh, I'd shut it down. Oh, I'd shut it down. Like, it's easy. Shut it down. And by the way, when you shut it down, and we did the exact right thing, we shut it down, then we reopened, and that's what we're doing now. We're well into it. But if we didn't shut it down at that point, we would have had millions of people dead. Millions of people. You see the numbers. The job that Mike Pence and the task force and all of us together have done has been incredible what we've done, what we've achieved, whether it's ventilators, whether it's supplying equipment to governors that were totally ill-prepared. Many of the governors were totally ill-prepared. Nobody wants to say that, but it's supposed to work that way, Federalist. It's supposed to work that way. The governors are supposed to do it. Many of them, and many of them did a fine job, and many of them came back well. But most of them didn't have the equipment that they should have had. Few of them had the ventilators, which are very, very complex machines and hard to make and hard to manufacture and expensive. And we're right now making thousands of ventilators a month, and we're sending them. We have all we can use. Our whole country, every state, we're stocked. We're stocked. And I always say it. I'll say it again. There's never been a person that needed a ventilator that didn't get a ventilator. Every single person that's ever needed a ventilator, with all that you've heard, with how much, you know, they said we didn't have. Again, I took over a country whose military was depleted and whose cupboard on this front were bare. The cupboards were bare. We didn't have anything. We didn't have a thing. We had very, very little. And we did a great job. We haven't been given, and it's not for me, it's for the incredible people, the generals, the admirals, all of the, the doctors, the nurses. And yet you saw yesterday convalescent plasma. You saw remdesivir. You'll soon see vaccines pouring out years ahead of what they would have been under a more traditional, let's use that term because it's nicer, a more traditional administration where they would have taken years to come up with this stuff. We're coming up with it like nobody's ever seen before. The FDA, Dr. Hahn, I want to thank him. Alex Azar, I want to thank him. They've come with things and done things that have never been done in terms of speed and, frankly, in terms of quality. If you look at what we're doing and what we're coming up with, drug companies are coming out with vaccines that are, I've seen some results already. It's going to be very, very soon. They're in stage three trials. It's unheard of. We wouldn't be there for two years if this were a more normal situation. So I just want to thank everybody for being here. And thank again, you. I felt an obligation to come to North Carolina. It's been a place that, uh, that's been very good to me. You know, we won a lot of victories here. I haven't been doing this that long, but I won every chance I had in North Carolina. I, I, even, I even stole a great chief of staff, Mark Meadows, right? I stole him from North Carolina. 
And he left Congress as a very popular guy. Could have been there for a long time if he wanted, and he, he came in. And by the way, you have a fantastic young gentleman going to take his place. He's a fantastic young guy, and he's going to be a, a real star in the party. He's going to be a real star in the party. So I just want to thank everybody from North Carolina. And I, I, do, I do want to show a little bit of a difference, because another state that's been very good to me is Wisconsin. And, and Joe Biden was going to have their convention in Milwaukee. And they didn't go there at all. They didn't do this. We did this out of respect for your state. We didn't do this for any other reason other than respect for the state of North Carolina. Because we said we wanted to hold our convention in North Carolina. And I think you're going to remember that, frankly, on November 3rd. We wanted to hold our convention in North Carolina. So I did that out of, out of respect. And if you had a governor that would have let us have some people, he actually told me this. We had an arena that holds 19,000 people. It was totally jammed, sold out. Every hotel was full, everything. And I called him. He said, but we have a shutdown going on. And according to the rules and regulations, now this is 19,000. He did say it. I don't think he'll deny it. But he said, according to the rules and regulations, the most people you're allowed to have in that room, meaning that arena, he viewed it as a room, is 10 people. I say, so, Governor, so I'm at 19,000, you're at 10. Can we work something in the middle? And it didn't sound too good. So we really had no choice. It was a terrible thing, but I felt so badly because you could have, I mean, economic development, money, all of the things that happened. But we decided, I was with Rana, the Vice President, everybody, Mark, and we said, let's have our big deal, the roll call, let's have it right here, and let's do it, and I'm going to show up, and I'm not going to tell anybody. You know, until a few minutes ago, nobody knew I was coming. Right? Nobody knew I was coming. So. But what's more important than the roll call? You're the ones calling it. So what's more important? So, and I have to tell you, you know, we're going to do a lot of things. I'm just going to go over very briefly because we're going to make a speech on Thursday night. I hope you're all going to be listening. Yeah. I hope, uh, because I came in and I'm on Air Force One, and Air Force One has more televisions than any plane in history. They've got them in closets. They've got them on ceilings, floors. They've got more television. You can't escape a television. And I turned to CNN, and they didn't have this. They weren't having it. Can you believe it? They didn't have it. No, no. CNN didn't have our roll call. Then I turned to MSDNC, as I call it. MSDNC, which is truly, it, it is a branch of the, of the Democrats. It's right. It's a, I wouldn't say fully owned corporation, but it's certainly a fully controlled, or they control them. Nobody really knows who's controlling who. But, you know, they had it on television. I remember watching it. And it was interesting. You know, you see the different states, and we say this, and we say that. The great state of Alaska, the great state of Alabama, the great state of North Carolina, the great state of all of them. And it's very interesting to me. They had theirs on, but they didn't show it. Instead, they're showing the scam because they're trying to show the post office so that when their whole mail-in thing fizzles, they'll try blaming it on the post office. Okay, so they're showing these hearings that are very boring, actually. <laughs> and they're not showing this either. They weren't showing this. And Fox had it on, but unfortunately, Fox wasn't showing it too much because they had the announcers talking, talking, talking. I said, I want to hear what they're saying. The delegates, I want to hear what they're saying. So I think we had to switch over to C-SPAN or to OAN or somebody. <laughs> but I wanted to hear them. But I can promise you, <laughs> I can promise you a few things. Number one, we will not be taking the word God out of the Pledge of Allegiance, okay? Like they did a number of times at their caucuses, so they took the word God out. I heard, I heard it. I was listening. I said, that's strange. You know, it's sort of weird. You've heard it all your life, right? Under God, under God. All of a sudden, those two words are missing. I said, oh, he must have made a mistake. <laughs> he must have, maybe the teleprompter wasn't working or his, his book wasn't working that I have right here. Something wasn't working. 
Must have meant. But the problem was then, the next day I heard it again. I said, that's not a mistake. That's, right, right. that's pretty. And then they immediately went into a mode. No, oh, no, 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 we didn't mean that. No, no. We didn't say it for the convention. We didn't say it. No, that's where they're coming from. Yep. That's where they're coming from. You can say it or not say it. That is where they're coming from. Just like with energy, they don't want energy. Not working well in Texas, by the way. I just looked at a poll. It's a, and by the way, it just came out that we have received 51% in the big and very important Rasmussen poll. And my numbers went up during the Democratic National Convention. 51%. So think of it. Think of it. <laughs> this place and you're from all over the place but this has been a a good a good one for me no but think of it so we're at 51 percent in rasmussen do you read about it do you hear about it you don't hear about it they give you these suppression polls where they do registered voters instead of uh most likely it's supposed to be likely likely in other words how about you you're likely to vote but how about you you're registered but i'm not voting but see under their plan where they send these ballots. You don't have to want to vote. You get the ballot, and then they have harvesting. They get guys to go, do you want to vote? No, not really, but I have a ballot. All right, good. Who's it for? Sleepy Joe Biden. I'll put it here, son. OK, can I have it? And they'll take it. In fact, harvesting is illegal in your state. They wanted to put a Republican fine man, a pastor. They wanted to put him in jail because he harvested. Now they want to make harvesting legal all of a sudden. They'll put him in jail as a Republican, right? If he was a Democrat, they wouldn't even be thinking about it. In California, they do the same thing. No repercussion. In North Carolina, you had a fine pastor, a fine man, and they got him on harvesting. They wanted to put him in jail. And now they want to make it all so that everybody can harvest because they know it's not a good thing. So people that don't want to vote are going to be sitting there. They'll be making them, if you talk about 80 million ballots, it's 80 million could even be higher than that. I used to say 51 million, now it's 80 million. They said, sir, you're a little obsolete with the 51. I said, all right, what is it? 80, I said, 80? How is it possible to think of it? They'll be sending them, they'll be dumping them in neighborhoods, they'll be, pe people are going to be picking them up, they'll be bribing, they'll be paying off people to grab some. This is going to be one of the greatest scams, and it's common sense. This has nothing to do with politics. It's common sense. Anybody, you don't have to know politics. They're going to mail out 80 million ballots. It's impossible. They have no idea. Who's mailing them? Mostly Democrat, Democrat states and Democrat governors. Well, supposing they don't mail them to Republican neighborhoods. That means they're not going to get them. So they're going to complain, and the election's going to be over, and then they're going to complain, and then they'll say, oh, well, we didn't get it. Big deal. In the meantime, you might lose the election. This is the greatest scam in the history of politics, I think. And I'm, not, I'm talking about beyond our nation. And they act like they're aggrieved. Like, by saying this, we're saying such a horrible thing. We're not patriotic by saying this. No. We voted during World War I. We voted at the voting booth during World War II. The pandemic, we're doing very well, and people know how to handle it. Look at the crowds. They're doing very well. It's very safe. It's going to be very safe. If you have an absentee ballot where you request it, we're all in favor of that. Absentee, like in Florida, they have absentee is good. But other than that, they're very, very bad. There'll be millions of ballots Take a look at New York. Take a look at Virginia. Take a look at New Jersey. All different cases. They just had one last night. Now they're thinking about recalling certain elections that took place with mail. -in. And these are small little elections that are locally based, that are easy to run. Not millions, but thousands of ballots. Thousands. Hundreds of ballots. But these are small, and they can't control it. They said 23% of the ballots were defective. What does defective mean? It means fraud. It means, it means a lot of things that we won't get into because I don't want to be accused. You see all the cameras back there? <laughs> it's the fake news. I don't want to be accused of anything. But what it means is 
They're trying to steal the election from the Republicans. That's what it means. In a very, very nice way, I will tell you, they are trying to steal the election, just like they did it last time with spying, and we caught them, and that included President Obama, and that included, that included, uh, let's be nice, Biden. <laughs> This could only happen in North Carolina. <laughs> but that included them, and they got caught. And then somebody said, well, what are you going to do? Well, we can't attack a president. Oh, I see. If it was me. They said, we can't attack a president. We caught him. We caught him cold. And they say, we can't attack. He was at meetings talking about it. And by the way, this was spying before and after. And I think it's a disgrace to our country. I think we can never let that happen again. But now they're doing something that, in a certain way, is more dangerous because it's more effective. They spied on my campaign. You know what they found? Nothing. But this is big stuff. This is stealing millions of votes, and it's going to be very hard. Now, we're in courts all over the country, and hopefully we have judges that are going to give it a fair call, because if they give it a fair call, we're going to win this election. The only way they can take this election away from us is if this is a rigged election. We're going to win this election. We're going to win this election. All right, you've been listening to the President of the United States in what has been an impromptu uh, appearance at the Charlotte Convention Center in uptown Charlotte. He's there thanking delegates uh, as of this morning, the official business of the convention.
judges, they'll say, none, sir. Because the other previous president, they want to, you know, it's a very important thing, federal judges. So I've appointed, uh, we will have appointed 300, could be even more than that by the end of the first term. And I sat down, I said, first day, I said, how many judges do I get to appoint? They said, sir, 142. I said, 100, because you know what? He thought that Hillary was going to win. Oh. Right? And the Republicans did not make it easy, let's say. But, you know, if you have enough time, there's not much anybody can do about it. We ended up with 142 judges, and then we've added many, many. And we're going to end up with 302 great Supreme Court justices. And remember this. I'm saying that I'm, I want, I'm demanding, actually, a list. Let Biden put up a list of the judges he's going to appoint, that he'll take them out like I did. I had 25, and we're going to take it out of that list. And we're going to be announcing a list over the next couple of weeks with the judges that we had, plus we might add a few more, so you know exactly where we stand. He can't do it because he's, he would appoint — not it's not him. He has no choice. The radical left will demand that he appoints super radical left, wild, crazy justices going into the Supreme Court. Your American dream will be dead if that happens. It'll be dead. And the next — and by the way, the next president — so I've had two. Some presidents have had none. You know, I have had two in a relatively short period of time. But I will tell you that the next one could have two, three, four, and even five, the next president. This is so important. This is so — whether you're talking about life, whether you're talking about Second Amendment, whether you're talking about military, this is so important. We have to do this. We have to win this election. But we brought back manufacturing. We rebuilt our military. We wiped out ISIS. I mean, think of it. When I came, ISIS was all over Iraq. The Prime Minister of Iraq was in last week, and he said, I want to thank you for defeating ISIS. I said, now, are you talking about me or the United States? You. Because when you came into office, it was a mess. They were all over Iraq and Syria, and you defeated them, sir. I said, good. Tell, tell that to the media, please. Would you do that? And he said, I will. So let's see if he does. But we passed the biggest tax cuts and regulation cuts in the history of our country. We replaced the worst trade deal ever made, NAFTA, with a great USMCA deal that's going to keep our companies here, and it's going to be treating us very nicely. And I wouldn't say the other two countries were thrilled with it, but they were happy enough. And we did that, and that's another thing. They said, you'll never be able to replace NAFTA. You'll never be able to get it. And I got it. We got it through Congress. We fixed a lot of our broken and bad trade deals. We're getting $40 billion now from Japan. We fixed a horrible deal that was made with South Korea. Remember, I was a Hillary Clinton special. She said, this will produce 250,000 jobs. And she was right, except, unfortunately, the jobs went to South Korea, not to us. Okay? Yeah. She said it would produce 250,000 jobs, and it did, to South Korea. And we stood up to China like nobody's ever stood up between the tariffs and the trade deal, which now — don't forget, when I made that, the ink wasn't dry before the China virus poured into our country, right? The ink wasn't dry. So I view that differently than I would have of you, because it's, it's done very well. Last week, they had the largest order of corn, the largest order of soybeans. Uh, they, they're doing things. You know, they're very smart. A lot of people, because they see my attitude, a lot of people would say, we're not going to order. They do just the opposite. I got a call last week, sir. In fact, Sonny Perdue is here, the great Sonny Perdue, Secretary of Agriculture. There he is. Is that right, Sonny? I got a call. They ordered the largest. It was the largest order of corn in the history of our country. Twice. Twice. The largest order of corn. The largest order of soybeans. So here's how smart. Somebody else would say, running some country, you know, they'd say, well, we're not going to do business with him. He's not saying nice things about China China's very smart. Instead, they order more corn than we've ever thought possible, right, Sonny? Order more soybeans than we ever thought possible. And now I have farmers calling me up, sir, we love China very much. Please don't be too tough on them, please. <laughs> it makes it very difficult, Sonny, right? You know, we do too good a job sometimes. We've achieved American energy independence, and we're now number one in the world by far. 
And I saw where, I saw where these phonies, you know, they want to end everything we've done. They want to end it. They want to go to wind. They don't even know if they want to go to wind. I think they want to just basically close up our country because they're taking away our strength. But they want to do something. But you don't have, there is no such thing. Solar can't do it. I love solar. It's all fine. You know, very, very heavily expensive, very expensive. But they want to go to other forms of alternate, alternative energy. And I think that's okay, except we don't have them. And it's not going to power these massive factories. So we need, and hydro I love. I, it's, it's one of my all-time favorites. Hydro, hydro I love, I have to tell you. That's the, the great dams. You don't see that too much. You know why the environmentalists say, you can't build a dam there. But now we can, because yes, we've, we done, can. we've done things uh, that nobody thought were possible. Like, example, uh, the Keystone Pipeline, we got that approved. The Dakota Access Pipeline, they were all bogged down, right? Right? I got it approved. Now, we've got things that they said you couldn't get done. So we are, we're energy independence, and they said we want to ban fracking. Right? No fracking. They want to, how do you think they'll do in Texas, Oklahoma? North Dakota, Louisiana is going to love it. We, there's no fracking. There's basically, they want no fossil fuel whatsoever, okay? No gas, no oil, no coal, no nothing, okay? So they don't want anything. Now, they're getting killed because a poll just came out in Texas. Texas wasn't happy. They want no guns. They want no oil and gas. And they want no God. No God. So it's no religion, no guns. Right? No oil and gas. I don't think you're going to do too good in Texas. You know, George Washington could come back from the dead, and he could choose as his VP candidate the late, great Abraham Lincoln. And you're not going to win the state of Texas if you have no oil, no guns, and no religion. I don't think so. You're not going to win too many places. We eliminated Obamacare's horrible and very unfair individual mandate, which basically knocked out Obamacare. We knocked out Obamacare. We've protected your Second Amendment. So important. We've protected your Second Amendment. We've cut drug prices first time in 51 years. We got drug prices down. Now I'm really doing it. I did a favored nations clause, meaning we pay the same price as the lowest country that has the best deal. The, the companies are going crazy, the drug companies. They're taking ads on me. I said, oh, I went to Mark Meadows. I said, Mark, they're killing me. They're spending, you know, they have nothing but cash, okay? <laughs> big Pharma, they call it, for a reason. There's nobody that gives the politicians more money than Big Pharma. Yeah. Nobody, not even close. So I said, well, look, if you're not going to negotiate a fair deal, we're going to do a favored nations clause to the top people, the biggest guys. They said, no, don't do that, favored nations. No, favored nations, because, you know, we have countries out there that are paying a tiny fraction of what our people are expected to pay. So if you have a country, Germany or others, they make, by the way, uh, UK, all of Europe, Canada pays 50 percent, 50 percent less. In fact, people leave our country, go to Canada, pick up their drugs, and they come back home. Can you believe it? This is the kind of difference. So I say, no, I want a favored nations clause. I also want a rebate clause, a rebate where instead of the money going to the middlemen, who have to be the richest people in the world, they get so much. They get more money, frankly, than the drug companies. At least the drug companies make a product. So I wiped out the rebate where now it goes to people, and I instituted what's called a favored nations clause. And it's very simple. You have that in deals. It's whatever the lowest price in the world. We're the biggest purchaser of prescription drugs by far in the world. So whatever the lowest price is that, got, that other countries pay. So if you have a country paying 10 cents for a pill and we're paying $2.50, and it's not such an exaggeration, believe me, then we get it for 10. So what happens is that doesn't work. So they'll go up a little bit. We'll come way, way down. So I said, favored nations, I want to pay what the lowest price is anywhere in the world. We're the biggest purchaser. We want a favored nations. They had a heart attack. And then I signed it. They didn't believe it. They didn't believe it.
And now what they're doing is they have ads, millions and millions of dollars worth of ads, that I've been horrible to the people because of drugs, and I believe in socialism. Socialism. You know why? Because some of the socialistic countries get the lowest price. So the only thing I have with socialism is I want to get their price, okay? That's the only thing. Other than that, other than that is our country will never be a socialist country. Okay? So we cut drug prices. And you could get cuts. You could get cuts. <laughs> You could get cuts as much as 50, 60, or 70 percent, maybe even more than that, on prescription drug prices. And wouldn't it be a kick? I'll use this. Wouldn't it be a kick in the ass? If I lost and Sleepy Joe is president, and this thing kicks in right about soon, right? In 30, 40 days, and people wake up after the election. Boy, Biden's done a great job. My drug prices just went down by 70 percent. What a great president he's been. He's great. And Sleepy Joe would say, I thought about that, but 